Yeah, I was a correction officer. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Hey Sarge my journey as a correction officer. Today, I wanna to talk about something that's gonna always be a problem in the system. It's always gonna be present, you're never gonna get rid of it, and it's always gonna be there, and that is contraband. Now, you might wonder why contraband is such a big deal in the prison system. It's, it's because of a lot of things. Uh, a few could be uh, something that's very minor, which would be a, a excess of stuff. Like, you just have all of this unusable stuff that you have. And, like, it could be a nuisance contraband, just extra magazines, all of this extra paper, all these extra clothing that you really don't need. Like, that's nuisance contraband. But then you go to the other spectrum and you got stuff like drugs, cell phones, and stuff like that. Now, that is a security risk. That is a problem. But contraband has to be managed that's why it's a topic. Now, I'm only going to tell you how I dealt with contraband, and it may not be necessarily the most good way to handle it, but I'm going to tell you how I dealt with it, and I can't fabricate nothing, but I can only tell you how I dealt with it. Now, my first um, experience with contraband, it came from when I worked at the mail camp, but like I said, when I worked there, every man had his own cell, so... In that cell, if it was in that cell, it belonged to that person, but you know whose contraband you were dealing with. It's not like working in an uh, open bay setting where you might go find some contraband and nobody wants to claim whose it is, you know? So at the mail camp where I worked at, it was one man in the cell. You go in there, everything that's in there, he's responsible for because it's his cell. Now, I didn't deal with or find a lot of, like, dangerous contraband at the male prison when I worked there. Uh, the most thing that I dealt with was like uh, nuisance contraband. You may find a guy with some extra uh, clothing. You may find somebody with some um, clothing that don't belong to him. You may find something like dirty magazines, you know. Uh, and let me say this. When I say dirty magazines, I don't mean like Playboy or Hustler. It's these magazines like the women are half naked. So, you you, you know. Yeah, you're locked up. You're going to take whatever you can get. But I'm going I'm to tell you like this. I did not touch those magazines bare hand. You know, you got to go in there with your gloves on because just use your imagination. But when you go to search that cell, you're going to see this stuff. And they're allowed to get those magazines because they're really not, like, pornographic in nature. They're just the women are half-dressed, so they could get those type of magazines. So that was the biggest thing that I really found, like, dealing with the males in the uh, confinement setting. Now, you will find sometimes, a lot of times, medication because so many people there are on different type of medications. And, yeah, just if you could think of it, they're probably taking medication for it. So sometimes you'll, you'll go in their cell and you'll find these little cups. The nurses come around cell front and they go to the... Uh, cell and the inmate is supposed to take that medicine right then and there and then they have this whole thing that they do where they have to open their mouth to show that they swallowed the pills but a lot of times some of these guys be so slick or sometimes the nurses are not paying attention and the officer is not paying attention that's with them they'll they'll slip by you they'll look like they took it but they really didn't or they will take it and regurgitate it because that nurse is not going to be there long she's going to make sure you did what you were supposed to do make sure she did what she was supposed to do boom and keep it moving so a lot of times you would go to sales and you would have an influx of pills like just pills all in these little cups i'm talking about eight nine ten pills and you don't know what they are you don't know if these pills belong to these per people. You don't know if they got the pills from somebody else. Um, the, the only time that you could really identify if that pill belonged to that person is if they have the Z-Pack. And that's the pack of pills where they have their name and all their information. And they were ab they're able to keep those pills and they just pop them out the back and take them as needed. That's the only way you could identify. Other than that, you don't know what all these other pills are. You know, they could be... They could be some strong stuff. I mean, you don't know. I don't know if they really got, like, narcotics uh, stuff that'll make you 
uh, high or whatever, but I know they have some pills in there for the mental. I do know that. And if those people are not taking that and they get off their medicine, hey, you don't know what you're going to have to deal with. So that's the only time, like, you should be, like, really worried about medicine because I don't know what, what kind of pills they be taking. But anyway, I went on a, a tangent. Those pills, that's contraband. They should get, you should get rid of those pills. I would flush them. Or if the, the inmate is willing to uh, say, hey, oh, this is this pill and I didn't take it because of this. Uh, he really should have had already taken those pills. I'm going to try to get rid of them because what if something happened, which thank God nothing like an overdose or nothing like that ever happened when I worked on shift and somebody had pills. But like I said, that was the main thing that I found at the male prison. Uh just that kind of miscellaneous contraband, that nuisance contraband. Now, I did see some other stuff that was very, very interesting, like uh, cell phones, cell phone chargers. Uh, one time, we uh, a guy was doing the mail and was just reading through the newspaper and found a bunch of $20 bills taped to the newspaper. Needless to say, it was an inside job because... The officer who worked the mail area, you know, he kind of let some stuff go by. But if it hadn't been for that guy, you know, reading the newspaper, he'd have never found all that money. And at this time, this was before, like, all the credit stuff was there. So cash was kind of, it was kind of valuable in prison, even though they really can't use cash. But it was kind of valuable. But he found that contraband. And another time, this, this was, like, a funny story because... It was this guy, we was all doing showers. So you have to go around and escort each individual inmate to the shower. So we went to this one guy cell. He did not want to come out for a shower. We was like, well, you got to come out. We got to search your cell. He made this big deal. Like, if I ever seen somebody tell on themselves when they could have just shut up and nobody wouldn't have thought twice about it, this guy told on himself. He was in the cell. He did not want to come out. He refused to come out. He was making this big fuss about not coming out of the cell. He didn't want to take a shower and he didn't want to come out due to not wanting to leave his cell. So he escalated the situation to where they had to pepper spray him. They had to pull him out of the cell. They had to use a cell extraction team to get him out of the cell. All of this and all he had to do was walk out of the cell. But he didn't want to do it. So we were trying to figure out the reason he didn't want to leave that cell. Couldn't figure it out. Like, we looked in there. We didn't find nothing. We searched the cell. Everything came up clean. But when he got in the shower, somebody noticed that he would not get this arm wet. And he was like, why ain't he getting that? Why he doing his arm like that? So, when they looked at him, they was like, hey, let me see that watch. No, nah, man, you ain't getting my watch. So, they almost had to use force again, but then they got the watch from him. So we're looking at this watch. We're not finding nothing significant about the watch. There's nothing special about this watch until one of the officers did something and pushed like a little tab on the side of it. Out pops a Sprint memory card. His watch was a phone. <laughs> he did all of this and nobody knew anything. It, it, it was like, it looked like a regular watch. The only thing, and we did notice that he had some headphones around his neck, but we didn't, you know, we ain't paying no attention. Everybody got walk, Walkman and uh, radio players, so we ain't thinking nothing of it. As we looked at this watch, we realized that his watch was a phone. And I was like, oh, man. So now, if he would have just walked out of the cell, nothing probably would have happened. We would have probably went, kept going on about the day like nothing was wrong but he drew all of this attention to himself and when they seen him not get his arm wet that gave it away he got himself a charge he got charged with something else and he had a cell phone inside of his uh in his possession so that was the most one of the more interesting things that i seen but there was also times that people had knives i never witnessed it i never saw it i never uh found a knife but knives uh more cell phones some people actually found drugs and it's clever the way that they hide this stuff but hey i never seen it so i don't really have too many stories about it now after i transferred from the mail facility 
to the other facilities that I worked at, I saw way more contraband. And it's probably because it was open population where inmates are more prone to be back and forth. Inmates could go outside the gates. Inmates can come back inside the gates. And a lot of times, people let stuff slide. Like, some officers let stuff slide. And sometimes, inmates get stuff from officers. Like cigarettes. Like, that's the biggest thing. Like, before, like, 2010, I believe, cigarettes were allowed on the compound. And I think around 2010, in Florida, uh, Rick Scott, the governor, he stopped the allowing to, uh, tobacco inside of the prison for the inmates so they could no longer have cigarette, cigarettes. But sometimes officers give inmates cigarettes. And sometimes inmates do nasty stuff to make cigarettes. Like if officer have a dip, like chewing tobacco, he'll take that dip out, throw it somewhere on the ground. Guess what the inmate will do? They'll go get that dip, take that same dip, Dry it out, let it dry, and they'll smoke it. Yeah, it's nasty, but it will happen. But it's contraband. So it's like the officers and the people working on the um, compound, they have to be careful what they do because they're just as responsible for contraband as the inmates are. And it's several times that, you know, I took a lunch to work and I might have left my bowl in the officer station. Now, sometimes it's inmates that could come in there and they can uh, clean the officer station and they'll get those bowls. Or if the inmate uh, come to take out the trash and they go through that trash, they'll get whatever is in that trash. So whatever you give as trash, look, they might look through that stuff and get it. You go and then you go search an inmate bunk and you wonder how they got this fancy Tupperware. It's because, you know, they got it out of the trash or somebody left a bowl or something there. So it's like, that's like miscellaneous uh, nuisance contraband, but it's still contraband. And sometimes, I'm going to tell you like this, you have to be careful of how you just want to go in there and attack everything as contraband because sometimes it could be a management tool. I ain't going to say it's right. I ain't going to say it's wrong, but I'm going to say sometimes you can use a person have a contraband to your advantage. It, say, for instance, you got a, a problem inmate. You go search their cell. You see that they have a bunch of contraband. It's stuff that's valuable to them because you got to think their whole life and their personal belongings is in their locker. That's what's important to them. That's what they deem valuable. So I'm not going to tell you or advise you to do this because, hey, you might not get the same results that I did. But... I use it as a management tool. I'll go and search his locker, and I'll be like, oh, you know you ain't supposed to have this, 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 and this, right? And to you, it may not seem like much, but to them, it's everything. So, i say, all right, you know that's contraband. If somebody else take it, I ain't responsible for it, but I'll let you keep it, right? And, and sometimes it's just things that help a person get along. But now you say a few days later, this person is acting crazy. Like they acting up, they want to show out. Then you can have a conversation. Or you say, hey, look, now I let you keep that contraband the other day and you over here acting like this. A lot of times, I'm not going to say every time, but a lot of times they'll be like, all right, so you know what? You're right. I'm going to chill out. You know, it's just all, the, all that give a little to help to get a little. You get what I'm saying? It's about that. Scratch my back, I scratch your back. You get what I'm saying? It ain't all about always taking, you ain't supposed to have this, you ain't supposed to have it. And, you know, it, and it's because they're locked up. You know, sometimes some people just need a reality check. Sometimes people just have an off day. But if you can use that to your advantage and you could do it in a way that is not going to cause harm or, you know, bother anybody as long as nobody ain't saying, hey, they stole my stuff and they got it and you let them keep it. You know, it's always going to be a, a pro and con situation. But to me, I used it as a management tool at times. And a lot of times it worked out in my favor. Now, I'm not going to tell you to do that once again. I'm going to say, figure it out for yourself. It's a lot of stuff that I could talk about when it comes to country band. But um, hopefully just, this just gave you a little bit of insight. You know, it's, it's really something that's never going to go away. It's something that you're always going to deal with. 
But you just got to know how to deal with it. And uh, just be aware of your surroundings. I hope that you guys enjoyed this episode. Drop it in the comment section. Let me know how you feel about it. Until the next time. Peace.